Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video I'm going to work on the one and only PG Unleash RX-78 II. This is one of the must get kits by Bandai in my opinion. And it is quite clear that this kit is the response to the recent rise of popularity in resin and detail plastic kits such as Takumi and Mechanical. As Bandai for the first time introduces photo edge and metal parts in their kits, both are fairly common in the third party realm. However, Bandai still only provides stickers in this kit, but this is understandable and expected. And of course, I'll be using aftermarket water slide decals. You probably have seen the unboxing of this kit by now, so I won't talk about the contents too much. But I'm very impressed by the designers from Bandai who are able to still make innovations out of this old suit. And I love that the build requires you to follow the phases and you build the kit layer by layer. It really makes you appreciate the engineering of the kit. Although the five phases might seem to be a revolutionary feature, but if you have built a Sasby for a car from 8 years ago, you already know that it has four of the same phases. It's just missing the RG-like frame of phase 1, but I've really got to give credit to Bandai for improving on something that they already did it best in, and that is the engineering and building experience for the builders. This is something you just don't get a lot in third party kits. Usually the verdicts for these kits are, it looks great, but a nightmare to build. Uh, if you've built a mechanical kit, you know. But Bandai has always been the king of good building experience, and in the PG Unleashed, they have stepped up the game yet again. But without further ado, let's get to building. Jazz Club. <laughs> And as you can see, this kit looks amazing just snapped together. And it has a lot of gimmicks such as open hatches and LED lights to make the kit special and unique. Although you have probably heard by now that the lights are not great, and this is due to Bandai using clear pieces for light transfer, and a lot of the brightness is lost due to light bleeding. So I'll be installing my own LEDs for better results. Another minor gripe that I have with this kit is that it has too much bling. To me the original Gundam should look more utilitarian, but this is just my preference. So I removed the chrome pieces in the arm and filled in the gap with epoxy putty to make it look natural. I also had to rescribe the middle line to make it consistent.
Next up, I start painting the inner frame. I worked on the metallic parts first in this instance to make the injection molded part shinier and at the same time make the chrome plated parts less shiny. In here I'm painting metallic red. Pro tip, if you want to paint metallic red and have it really pop, you can base the part with gold first. It gives the clear red later a warmer and saturated tone. For the frame I mainly use three colours, for the joints I use this grey from Fortune Meow. So this colour will show more compared to the other two which mostly get covered by the armour. And for the other two colours I mix a deep blue grey and a sort of neutral grey. And I think they work well for the frame, it gives the frame some interest instead of just the usual neutral grey. And in here, I added some smaller color separations. In here, I used two different mixes of enamel grays to do a reverse wash. It is a great way to add color separations and it saves a lot of time from masking. The downside to reverse wash is that you can only do it to even surfaces. Also, you don't want to leave it to cure overnight as you'll have a hard time cleaning. Uh, don't ask me how I know. In here I'm adding even more accent colours. Remember for lighter colours like yellow and orange, uh, you'll want to use white or pink uh, underneath to make the colours pop. Next up is gloss coat. Usually it's recommended to top coat pieces individually, but since I painted the inner frame, I needed to be careful not to have too much paint on, that I caused the connection points to be too tight. So it is okay to part assemble and then top coat in sections to avoid that in this case. Gloss coat is important for panel lining and decal application because they require a sort of smooth surface to work on. But this is especially important because I've used enamel paints already and I'm going to hand paint more enamel paints later on. So the gloss coat is here to help protect the layer underneath. I prefer to use automotive used gloss coat here because of one reason. They are super cheap. You get almost 10 times the volume that Mr. Colors gloss paint for the same price.
And now I can add enamel paints, which can be easily cleaned up with mineral spirit or lighter fluid. I'm also painting the pilot, something that I don't usually do and I'm not great at. But since it's gonna get hidden away, so I thought I would give it a try. Paints are used for water-based acrylics by Fayejo. In here I'm adding some water slide decals for extra details. There's also a couple of ones from the manual as well. But of course I'm using aftermarket decals. These ones are by Evo. Next up I add a small amount of photo edge parts. To apply these, you need to use as little super glue as possible and avoid moving the parts around as super glue dissolves paints. You can use a pointy skewer to apply for accuracy. After that, it's time for top coat. I like to use a super smooth clear by Mr. Color because it is super matte. And if you thin it with rapid thinner, it dries in seconds. Wow. There's also more photo edge parts that came with the kit. These ones already have adhesive at the back so it pretty much works like normal stickers. But yeah, there's a lot of work put into the inner frame. So I appreciate if you leave a like or comment. And for the next part I'll be finishing the kit and I'm turning the kit into the origin version so stay tuned for that. But for now enjoy the review and I'll see you in the next video.